Today, more than ever before, investors and entrepreneurs are proactively investing capital in solutions designed to generate a positive social or environmental impact. In practice, these solutions are developing in most parts of the world, across nearly all asset classes and at many different levels of risk and return. During the 2012 World Economic Forum here in Davos, the Credit Suisse Research Institute launched a paper on this exciting new topic, so-called impact investing. We caught up with some of the researchers and leading impact investors. We asked experts on the topic how impact investing can accelerate economic development. Impact investing is uh, right at the intersection of philanthropy and for-profit capitalism. So looking at how to create enterprises and businesses that see themselves as doing a social good as well as creating profit for their inv investors. And I think that impact investing is, is really the, the future of how we should be thinking about business because business does have a social impact, whether it's good or whether it's bad. It's really, I think, a complement, another tool uh, that has to go along with successful development strategy. If you don't have a successful government development strategy in terms of uh, an open economy, in terms of education for all, in terms of uh, developing uh, market institutions, this kind of social impact investing won't be able to substitute for that. But it can certainly complement to deal with issues where either the government doesn't have adequate resources or there's specialized issues in specialized populations. I think uh, uh, it is a trend that started about 10 years ago and uh, the, social, the Schwab Foundation for Social Entrepreneurship I think was very helpful in that aspect because obviously they introduced and invited social entrepreneurship entrepreneurs to come to the table and to discuss their needs and their visions and their strategies. And these people have been the fringe, but now are becoming mainstream. So what is the typical impact investor profile? Is it gaining popularity in the next generation of investors? I think it's absolutely gaining popularity and you're finding more and more individuals my age who do not, um, do not want to make an investment unless there is a social component to it. Um, and so they actually do typically tend far away from the just purely 100% financial return endeavors, particularly if there's a negative social side to it. The vision, the enthusiasm has moved down the income distribution. So we're not just talking about the wealthiest individuals in the world who clearly are very interested in this. But I know in the United States among say students populations that I know, undergraduates, uh, MBA students, tremendous amount of interest in both getting involved in impact investing as an investor, but also getting involved in carrying out the projects. We spoke to some leading impact investors about the pros and cons of promoting growth in the social entrepreneurial space. Cons, obviously, I think it is not, in, not understood well enough, because for me as an investor, the first criteria is it has to have a, social, it has to have a financial return, but then it also has a social return, so it has to have impact, so that we impact the people who are not impacted yet, and it has to be scalable. And I think the, the cons are that those concepts are not well understood yet in the larger investment uh, uh, industry. Uh, the pros are that the opportunities are vast. Well, I mean, one of the primary cons is that with impact investing, it can be very difficult to predict what the actual return will be over time. And this is the same with calculating intrinsic value uh, in the value investing approach uh, that's been around for almost 100 years. The other kind of downside is really the risk that can come about not having that uh, rigorous prediction uh, methodology in place. But the upside is obvious. I mean, you're investing in a way that brings about sustainable long-term value creation as opposed to just looking at short-termism and immediate returns. I think one of the most challenging things about building out this impact investing space is that there is, there is a huge range of what people consider impact. Uh, some people think that a sort of a do no harm attitude is, uh, is, is a way to create impact sort of more passively. And then there are other people that say, no, unless you are directly in uh, that risky venture in the middle of sub-Saharan Africa, you're not really creating impact. Finally, we asked leaders in the field whether impact investing really can become a medium of change in the world. Well, absolutely. Particularly if you're using impact investing, whether it's philanthropic do in, with philanthropic dollars, using impact investing to create markets and wealth creation in areas where a market might not naturally come up.
because of whatever inefficiencies are present. So when you can use philanthropic dollars maybe as first loss capital, as an example, you're able to spur um, a whole uh, system that maybe was never present before. Let me say that I think there's some important uh, reverse innovations or innovations we can learn from here. Uh, particularly, the one that I've been struck by recently is really where there was a large company that got involved, but it started out as, it started out frankly as an impact investment in the corporate responsibility area of Vodafone, and that is uh, mobile money in Kenya, which has now of course become a major activity of two major uh, companies. But it started out as with a lot of people in the Gates Foundation and other places thinking about the importance of how do you give people the ability to carry out transactions where they don't have bank accounts. So that innovation is already spreading. For further information on the latest trends shaping the field of impact investing, visit the website creditswiss.com slash research institute.